wow, I don't know that much about Rob Ager himself. Um, I guess what's interesting to me about Rob Ager is that he seems to have seen through a trap that a lot of people in Western culture aren't able to see through, which is that we focus on linguistic and spoken meanings, whereas he's able to see meaning through picture, text, art, color, sound, the images. He can see a story told through images, which is how most of modern society actually works. But we're really unaware that we're being influenced and changed and, and, and almost in a certain way kind of subverted by advertising and, and everything around us, by the colors, the shapes, the sounds. And he has opened his eyes to a new dimension. Um, they, Go on, Morbius. Okay, <laughs> he's taken the blue pill, and he has really seen, I think, a new way of seeing the world, the way that I think gives you much more depth and understanding as to what's really going on. So when he makes images and pictures like this, or when he sees a movie, he's listening to the text, but he's also just looking simply at the images presented to him. And I, I think that's a, that's a dimension that, for some reason, modern man has lost out on. In, in ancient Greece and, and in all ancient cultures, everyone is kind of always talking about context and how the connections between things. They're really, really keen on figuring out where your place in the universe is, whereas we tend to focus on individual spoken meanings and, and you know, scientists. Do. We've become more a scientific, rationalist culture. So I think he's seen through that, and that's why he is an inspiration to me. For the medium of art, or for the medium of film, or of film critique, which thing? Everything. Everything. I think everything he does is inspired by the idea that meaning is not conveyed simply through what's presented flatly, as in like the obvious surface meaning, either whether it be text or picture or anything. Um, there's always something else that's pushing your mind. Like, for example, the color red or the color blue. I mean, we just have certain associations in our minds that already are giving us information, whether we know it or not. And you think he sees something, the meaning behind these things, or he recognizes those base impulses and for, for what they are? Right. He can, he can see that we are being manipulated, or at least our mind is receiving more information that we, than we are actually conscious of. Um, I think it's more obvious when he talks about commercials, though, um, because there is, I know Alex Jones is crazy, but there is a war on for your mind. That's the truth. And, and the world is fighting a war for your mind, and that's how they're doing it. But they're not telling you it. They're well, showing you it. I think Chris has done enough background study. How, how many Rob Ager videos have you watched? Uh, I've you only know? watched, I think, one of his movie critiques. Yes, it was the relationship between Darth Vader and Luke. Yeah. That was the video that I, I did watch. Well, and I thought it was very, very good and very insightful. Some of his other film analysis analyses, um, though, they seem to be more spot on than a lot of actual film critic expert type people. Um, yeah. It was a 2001 a Space Odyssey, a film I just beyond my scope of understanding, but <laughs> Rob Ager actually made it make sense for some reason, the way he analyzed it, especially the parts about the monolith. And a lot of top names in film missed some of the depth that Rob Ager could find. Uh, George Lucas, they said, oh, we could never know what the monolith means. Uh, Spielberg as well, oh, never, we could never know what Kubrick's intent was. But Rob Ager seems to be closest to spot on, especially in Kubrick films, and the way he analyzes them. So he's, I don't know how widely recognized he is, you guys are the fanboys, but he seems to be quite respected in breaking down films by, I don't know, great names like Kubrick. Or... Isn't it amazing what he's done, though? It's not something that difficult. It's just looking at things in a new way. When he realized the screen was the same image as the monolith, I mean, that's all you really had to do. It seems amazing to me that all of these minds, and even scientific, even like Michio Kaku and these guys, they didn't get it. But all it was was just a picture. But they were waiting for someone to tell them the meaning. Um, that's amazing. That What goes right in front of your eyes, you can simply just miss it. So it's right in front of you. In a very roundabout way, we're saying that Edgar um, has a very keen eye for details that everyone else will miss. Yeah. Um, and I don't mean this in a negative way. I think he has a keen eye for the obvious. That this is the new fad in brain theory, that there's a th something called fast thought and slow thought. And fast thought tends to focus on one object to the detriment of everything else, to the point where they've done studies where a gorilla can actually walk into a room when they have people doing like math problems, and they won't notice it. 
um, they are totally and completely focused on so on focused on what they're doing in, in the case of movies, the narrative, the textual narrative of the movie, that they miss the most obvious things. In retrospect, when you look back and you see them, you're like, oh my god, how did I miss that? That is unbelievable. There's a very famous YouTube video. You, I think you can search it by just the, like the um, basketball bounce test. Yeah. Thing. Where, the, where you ask somebody to watch a video oh. and count how many times they pass a basketball. Isn't the title of the study of the gorilla in the room or something like that? Yeah, and they... The, the first, yeah. I, I actually did that to my mum, and she didn't notice the gorilla. I didn't notice that. And I was freaked out. Though. Yeah, you focus on the basketball so much because that's the task that you are given, and the rest of the, the environment is completely blind. You are blind to it. Yeah, I mean, I've seen recent psychological studies that have said basically, when it comes to this kind of thinking, American in Western societies, but America in gen especially, is is extreme in this case that we are so task focused, so specific, individually focused that we we tend to miss the bigger connections. Um, my brother told me of a great study where they showed people from Asian countries and and people from Western countries two pictures, and the pictures were a cow um, in a field and a cow with a barn behind it. And they watched the eyes of these people. And the Western people, they tended to focus on the cow in each picture. The Asian people from Asian countries, they focused on the background. They looked at the changing background that the cow existed in. Um, and so they're looking for their relationship to the cow, whereas we're just focused on that cow. I mean, not to say that any of these ways are more better ways of thinking or being, they're just simply different ways of focusing on tasks. So the train has been derailed. I lost track of where we went. We were looking for background. The point that I'm making, that I'm trying to make, is that what's going on in this picture is not going to be explicitly obvious. There's going to be a surface narrative and a, and a deeper narrative, and he's going to work on both levels. And he tends to focus on dualisms. He likes these dualisms. Well, I can't wait until your turn comes up, because it's going to be full of flesh-colored bombs. Yeah, yeah. So I'm going to focus on something that's uh, really obvious to me. Boy, I've just been introduced to what this person does, and I'm kind of scared of this person, actually. <laughs> well, I mean, just looking at the picture, right, the contortionist, it's a head, two arms, two legs, and that's it. There's no there's no body. Um, some obvious things to note, right, the two hands are right-handed, there's no left hand. Uh, the feet, though, we have a right and a left. And first impressions in five words or less, without going into depth, just your first gut reactions. Sexual. Sexual. Erotic. That's it? Two? Two's good enough? Yeah. <laughs> a man of few words, a man of few words. All right, two's good. Chris? No, we're yeah, we're, no. uh, we're with five words or less. Quite um, close. That's four. Dark, alien, uh, strange, exotic. I don't get I don't get the sexual tones. You already let me shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Quick very difference. well, Spence, let us hear your five words or less. You've got five very, seconds. He's very yeah. verbose over there, very verbose. <laughs> I'm, I'm on the end of the circle, so... Me. Dustin. I'm next. Um, sexual. <sighs> a lot of sexual Impregnation. Honor. Birth. I said no depth. Okay. <laughs> okay. Oh, sorry. Um, You're not going to give us the V word? Darkness. Trapped. Trapped. So I only have two. Um, well, maybe three. Uncomfortable. Can I add rape as well? You can add that later. <laughs> that is definitely uncomfortable, though. Thank you for adding to it. So... Uncomfortable, um, confined, claustrophobic. Yeah. Mm. yeah, yeah. I mean, the confined and claustrophobic obviously are self-evident, but but uncomfortable. I mean, the the face that we do see seems to be at peace, at rest. I, I don't you know just these discomfort proportions and what's coming at me just put me at. I was at. I know. I felt yeah, uneasy. You just have to glance at it. It's instantly, just uneasy. Instantly, it's 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 uncomfortable. And it's instantly uncomfortable and sexual. I, I think that says more about British psyche. Isn't <laughs> it? British we're, we're, we're very uncomfortable, uncomfortable with sex. <laughs> no, do you get the, the uncomfortable part, Dustin? I do. I Something very, just immediately very strange and, and off-putting. The first time I saw it, I was like, wow, it's very... It's probably I mean, uncomfortable. If or I were to make a tagline, tagline, I would say nightmare fuel. Yeah. I mean, I said to Dustin before, it's like, I mean, all it is is, is, is it's naked flesh, it's limbs and naked flesh. But you, you look at something like Michelangelo's David, yeah. which is naked limbs and flesh, but it's not uncomfortable. 
or even that sexual. But this, in a gla at a glance, is 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 I, uncomfortable I, and sexual. I think it's got to have something to do with the fact that there's no body, no body, and I mean the head, the center of the piece is is firmly planted between two legs, which are coming out at you. So, I mean, uh, yeah, we're moving to the next segue. Yeah, depth. Let's add some depth. We got our first impressions, right? In a few first words. Impression, right? It's a person in a box. It's a person in a box, right? We That's we're done the with the first marriage. impressions. Yeah. Well, let's look for the depth to it then. Let's give it some depth. Don't have to go too in depth about it. Just okay. We know that it's uncomfortable, and we're not sure about proportions, and it's you know making everybody you know putting them not at ease. We're I very agree. uneasy here. I think but what do you think the overall scope meaning of it is? I think you've got to follow your eye. You follow your eye to find out what the overall scope is, and to follow your eye, you, you start at the top left with, with the hand, and then you, you go across to the right, and it's the name, the contortionist, and then you come down to the face in the center, and then you end up with a giant foot. Yeah. See, my my eyes don't sort of be ever left. My eyes are drawn immediately to the center. The colors are lighter. I mean, it just commands attention right away. Yeah, I think. Well, once once you've looked at the center, once once you've kind of you've seen wow. The center, and you start looking around, and you kind of go from the top left. Isn't part of the fact that you feel uncomfortable is the fact that you see, even if you don't consciously see it, you see the fact that there's an arm bending in a way that it can't bend. Um, that should immediately kind of put you off. There's two right hands, and there's seemingly only one being here. It's very the shining in the impossible rooms, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, it's there, and you see it, but you don't realize it. Yeah, but you don't often see that with regards to the human body, I mm -hmm. think, which, which is what makes it uncomfortable. What again, we're dealing with two realms. Like this was, you, what was the name of the artist it was a tribute to? Please help me out, guys. I couldn't. Dolly and Geiger. 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 Um, these are the two artists that he said influenced the creation. And what is Dolly's background? I'm not an art guy, so. Um, he's a surrealist painting. I think maybe his most famous painting is The Melting Clocks. Um, Salvador Dali, I mean, wow, how can I describe his paintings? They're, they're kind of this surrealist, maybe you would call them nightmare fuel. Um, they're, they're this kind of bizarre landscapes of, of melted objects and giraffes and distorted so, so animals. This is why we have distorted uh, proportions yeah. on the limbs and why we have two right hands because of a tribute to surrealism. Because yeah. I like, I do know Dali, but nothing else than mustaches and hats. That's all I know. But isn't, isn't the thing, one, one of the things about Dali is it's, it's small things that make up a bigger picture, yeah. which is what this is. It's lots of small things making up into a big thing, but they're not very easy to see yeah. or define. Yeah. All right, so let's talk about Geiger then. <laughs> I know Geiger. Right? Okay. <laughs> this is something I might know. All right, so where do we see Geiger in here? Because said the second artist was Geiger. The color. The color. Yeah, I mean, that would be the first place to go, obviously. The darkness. The, the sexuality, even though we kind of don't know where it's coming from. The not quite human yeah. elements to it, right? The impossible kind of smashed together body. Um, all right, so um, <laughs> the tattoos we just learned about from Ricky. Yeah, the tattoos. The most familiar thing for me is aliens, right? Everything from Geiger is those creepy alien rape monsters. You mean the foot there? From the Ridley Scott. <laughs> exactly. The foot is if you put like something protruding out of the bottom here, um, that would be. Something fighting it for itself. I mean, green humanoid uh, definitely has echoes of, of alien to it. But I don't know. Um, I, I think the, the teardrop on, on the forehead, I mean, to me, it lends kind of a Hindu aspect to it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the, the face, uh, very to me, is very feminine. And again, not quite human. The, ch the cheekbones definitely are uh, almost, I would say, robotic. But I guess alien definitely is probably more apt in this case. So I'm going to switch over to human, which is like um, Geiger. So basically Geiger is a cross of sexuality and robotics and non-human objects, yeah, right? That's right. So it's a lot of dick jokes. <laughs> yes. Yes. Basically, and I mean, uh, we were talking earlier about how birth could easily be uh, one of the meanings that you could take from this piece. Right. right. You jump to the deeper layers. <laughs> cool. No, no, this is where we should head. Uh, Rob, initially, what did you think the deeper layer on this was? Sex. Sex. Okay, sex. That's sex. Say. Sex and a rope. Well, the, the face is just, it's coming out right from the groin, isn't it? It's like, you know, the two legs, it looks like somebody's lying down experiencing some orgasmic pleasure. <laughs> or, or 
peace and, and well, serenity. I mean, is, let, let's be fair about face, though, with a, like a Joker smile and your eyes closed? That's not my own face. <laughs> yeah, I don't see ecstasy here, but I mean, that's why I think the birth, right? The, the peace and tranquility of original birth, the head is coming up in between the two legs. Tranquility. I think the ecstasy birth. comes from simply... Yeah. That, is mean, duality. that is duality, though, yes. Well, I mean, not, obviously not the tranquility for, <laughs> for the mother, necessarily, uh, during the experience, but, uh, but the simplicity, right? And the fact that you are coming out of a confined space. Um, and the fact that the, the baby is often in a contorted shape uh, in the womb. And as it comes out, the mother is in a contorted shape, possibly during the, the birthing process. So there's a lot of contortioning going on uh, during the entire birth experience that I think. Yeah, you're hitting all the, all the points that I thought about. Like initially, I just wanted to throw out something half-assed about what I thought it meant, and I thought it was birth to me. Again, yeah, the position of the feet, um, it's in an uncomfortable position. I think the top hand is um, reaching out in pain, like it wants to stop this whole process. And I think the bottom hand belongs to someone else, and it's actually taking the child from the womb. Yeah, presenting the the baby or... Which fits in perfectly with the fact that he's just had a baby. And... Like, several points about contortion. Not just birth itself, right? There was... Yes, um, the, the contortion in the act of, of sex. Um, contortion in the act of giving birth. The contorted baby inside the womb. Um, the contortions the mother has to go through in the birthing process, right? Um, there's all kinds of contortions you could read into that. It's strange then that the face is so calm. Yes. I when, just when you're actually, you know, when I remember my wife's face when she was giving birth, and that's contorted in pain. It was just the wife or the child, though, because the child comes out basically looking dead. Right? It does. Yeah. I, I, yeah. Until the, until you hear them cry for the first time, you do think that that's dead. pretty close to a dead face. Yeah, I, I, but when you think, I mean, everyone was talking about how uncomfortable it was how you describe the depending on a glance. If you think about contortionists, right, and, and the shape of the arm, everything, it, if it does look uncomfortable, then why does the face look so at peace? And why is the hair done up in, in a top knot? Well, why is, why is the top back? hair so neat and tidy and the bottom hair is all over the place? Well, because the bottom there is minge fringe. Go on, Justin. Hit me. Come on, man. There's minge fringe. You've been holding it in for so long now. Oh, well, okay. Let's just let's just deal with what I, I think is really obvious to me. I mean, I could be way off base here, but the hair. We, we've been talking about the hair, so let's. I'll just say it. Fine. Pubic. It's very pubic. It looks pubic to me. The face itself has the structure of a penis. Um, it's very phallic, um, but it's also phallic. So wait, you're saying Rob's artwork is a dick face? It's not only a dick though. It's not a dick because there's some nice feminine features there, right? You said the face was a penis, so I was thinking dick face. The, the, the head is a penis, but the face itself it looks kind of like ovaries with bleeding down to a vagina. And what's really kind of telling is right next to the face, on the right, right, just to the right of the face, is a symbol of the man and the woman, kind of suggesting this is a duality of sexes in here. So I think it'd be a really nice touch if you put a kind of penis face with a vagina kind of face on. What was what's the, the, the what was the what did you describe the drop as before, Grace? The uh, <laughs> uh, that was not me. That was uh, one of you insane individuals. Oh, oh you you said you were going on about Hinduism and spirituality. Yeah. So that would be like the uh, bindi. The bindi, yeah. Yes, I was thinking of Shiva or I, I mean probably yeah. not given that what Shiva is generally. Um, Represented in your religion, but but some kind of feminine Hindu god. You have the you know the symbolism, the, the symbols themselves on the limbs. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know the teardrop uh, very echoes to me of, of that kind of spiritual identity. Spiritual identity. What did you think that was again, Justin? Um, well, I mean, just initially on the surface, <laughs> it looks like semen dropping down from a penis, but. <laughs> It could also be a bindi, which is the center of the kind of, you know, of a, of a Hindu kind of god. A or B, ladies and gentlemen. Um, <laughs> I mean, take your pick. It's yeah. kind of the center of the picture as well. Yeah. Um, it's very central, and it's the only really color to the entire piece, right? You have this off greenish, dirty green color in blackness, and then this center teardrop of color. I, I, I can see the pre cum. <laughs> And uh, I guess I can kind of see, I can kind of see the realism. I, I can also see like you know female genitalia there as well. Um, yeah, the eyes kind of look like ovaries, I guess, to me a little bit. What's interesting is what what the description of what the baby is supposed to be on Wikipedia is the third eye, 
Um, and he loves his third eye. So yes, the whole third eye. The, the 2001 is the yes, the third eye. Um, it's this. It's the third eye is always the eye of enlightenment, right? It's the eye of God. It's interesting that the, the, those two eyes are closed and the, that kind of looks open. Yes, the third eye is open. Is open in this picture. This is the only eye that's open. I guess this would be the lot. Uh, what What are we being enlightened to? Uh, that is a big question that I'm not sure I have a very good answer to. All right, so we've, we've gone through that symbol on the inner left thigh, yeah, the inner which is man and woman together. Um, so, okay, I'll get some things. But, 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 but if those are sexual organs, right, and, and that is not, in fact, a baby being born, but the asexual organ itself, then it is not birth so much as it is reproduction. Yeah, I mean, for me, this picture, maybe this is wrong-headed, but it looks to me like it's, it's kind of a... a about impregnation, the act of creation itself. I mean, this picture is an act of creation, right? Um, Socrates, when he, when like, he, can it, maybe it encompasses all parts of it. Then, yeah, the impregnation, the birth, exactly. contortion of sex, the contortion of, of giving birth, and uh, I, I mean, like, yeah. I mean, what's great is Socrates used to wander around, and he used to say that I'm a midwife. I'm a midwife to ideas. He said, I don't actually create ideas. I I help people give birth to them. Um, this is kind of this 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 painting seems like it's a it's a product of the birth of Rob Ager himself, which leads me to my point about the uh, the yeah, foot on the left. China's. <laughs> the, the so he, Rob Ager has signed his name there on the on the the, the left side of the painting, and um, the A is is nice and colored in, and it's kind of looks like it's penetrating what what seems to be vaginal areas. I wonder if he's telling us that this is the birth he gave birth to this painting, right? Like someone else thought it was like a what was it, a emoji cat? Yeah, an emoji <laughs> cat. I don't know if Rob Ager has been going on two channel too much. Um, it, it looks to me as if like this area is a kind of another vaginal region with the hair kind of off the side. Do you see the vagina like this? Um, I'm having difficulty. <laughs> Wanting to, but uh, <laughs> this is where I want some like 1960s cheesy game show music. Let's spot the vagina. <laughs> I mean, I, I guess, it, but I, I see. It. But if you look hard enough, you're going to see shapes like that everywhere. This, and this, some of us, Dustin, do apparently see these sexual You're always everywhere. saying this. Though. This is your fallback argument. Because you can because see it's true. anywhere. Well, but is it not true? Do you I, see a vagina here? Uh, up on the upper arm. Uh, on the upper arm. I can't say that I do. I'll oh, see. There you go. See, but I see a bit. I mean, like the problem is, like again, we, we like I said at the beginning, we don't want to focus on individual things. Like this is the problem with the Western mind. I think one of our biggest things we have to overcome is the fact that we can't look at things out of context. It, to look at this part right down here and say, well, that doesn't look like a vagina because it's not, you know, this this graphic picture of a vagina seems wrong-headed to me. I mean, I, w I want to say it's a vagina in context of the fact that every one of these things give me a clue as to the sexual nature of this picture, right? He's That's giving me a clue. So in the context of the fact that there's a man and woman symbol, there's open, there's, there's, there's arrow on the right, there's, there's leg on the right, there's, a, there's almost a penisly shaped, and there's a indent here with an egg inside of it. There's dots, which remind me of eggs and, and kind of impregnation. Everything in this picture, and I could be totally wrong about this, but everything in this picture seems to be telling me, look for impregnation, sexual metaphors. So when he's making kind of a very strange object off to the side, I'm more inclined to believe that it's not random. I could I, be wrong about that. I, I would agree. See, when I look at it, I actually see something like a butterfly, as in the, the cocoon, the, the transformation, oh, the nice. birth. Uh, <laughs> so that's what I saw in it, um, but I... I can't disagree with you, uh, given the rest of the picture, and that sexuality it's, is obviously uh, a strong thing like, yeah, here. I mean, taken on its own, out of context, you, you, probably, you probably wouldn't see anything. But given everything in the picture, you know, all that they're all subtle hints that, that nothing says this is this. Yeah. Nothing is definitive, but taken all together, you know, when you glance at it, you know, subconscious, it, it enters the subconscious. It's all hypnotically, it goes in, and you think, oh yeah. things not looking at something individual but looking at the themes and the context within the entire picture um, now granted I'm not saying I'm right about this this could be totally wrong 
But I think this is how we have to go about looking at movies and art. And this, I think this is part of what he's trying to tell us. Well, anyways, I've learned something valuable. I've learned some butterflies look like vaginas. Yeah, yeah. So for him to just paint a painting and say, well, I just felt like painting it that way, seems to me that would, that would betray everything that he believes in a really great piece of art should be. Like, there are things that confuse me about this picture, I'll be honest. Like, um, the two right hands. I mean, what am I to make of this? And this is one of the most important things in the picture. Um, this, it's, I think it's trying to intend to tell us that there's not, there's some, there's two of something going on here. At least two. At least two of something, right? It's possible that there are five beings here. Possible, yeah. It's possible that there are five beings here. And what really, I really would like a clue on is where he writes the contortionist. And it seems to me that it's obvious there are letters out there. Letters that are not part of that word, contortionist. Now, what it is he wants me to make out from these letters I'm going to need more time. I don't have enough time to figure out what he's trying to tell me up there. I'm going to need a decoder ring. Yeah, I'm going to need that Toucan Sam decoder yeah, ring. Didn't did we just read about the, the guy who thing? he just sang random things? Yeah, he kind of put these these, these initials and stuff on his tattoos. And we, we know how Rob Egger, you know, reads autobiographies. Every interview he gives us that in the Kubrick archives. He's probably done similar kind of research on Geiger as well. Yeah. I so, I mean, could it, could it be a... It could be encoded, just words that I'll never, we could never figure out on our own. It could be it just words. seems so cruel. Yeah, I think, I mean, it seems like, not my, my initial thought is he's giving us letters that kind of look like letters, hoping that our subconscious mind will fill in the rest and get the meaning. But he's, he's, got, he's got a long, long, long history of doing this. Going yeah. back to 2006, when he wrote his, um, his self-help book, Collative Learning, and the final chapters of that, he gives you case studies, and he point he points out in the case studies that oh, the, you know, I'm gonna, I'm in these case studies are are all the tools that I've I've shown you before. Oh, by the way, there are also some new tools that I haven't talked about, but you should find them on your own. <laughs> Thanks very much. <laughs> if you had, if you had, if we each had one question to ask him about this picture that would be answered in Kent, <laughs> what what would it be? I personally, I would have to go with, with the letters, uh, the seemingly random, extraneous characters um, around the title and around his name. You'd want to know what that meant. If there is a meaning to them, yes. Okay. I got mine, then. Uh, if that's answered, I want to know the meaning of that bindi shape, the multicolor shape. Why is, is that? Semen or bindi? Is what it semen, bindi, or... Semendi, maybe? Oh, that's a nice, nice porn star name. Semendi. Semendi. Wow. I mean, it's the only thing in there that has a lot of bright colors, and it's the center of the painting, and it seems like something is going on here, and I want to know if it can't simply be... To me, it seems like something can't simply be seen. Well, can it just be like foolish? It comes, it it comes from the third eye. <laughs> I can't. It comes from the third eye, and it's fertile, and it brings right. life, it gives color. Right, I mean, that, I think that, that would be the direction it has to be, right? It's the third eye, it's enlightenment, it's life itself. I don't know, maybe something like this. This is which, which pink, the pink third eye, though, right? Yeah. Not, the, not, the, not the blue or brown one, okay, the okay. pink third eye. <laughs> What's the question you want to answer, then? Right, see, I'm not even trying to, you know, Scooby-Doo solve the mystery anymore. I want to know if this makes him uncomfortable. Does this feel like contortion or confinement to him? What does this make him feel after birthing this creation and looking at it and seeing it realize? How does this feel to him personally, to Rob Ager? I mean, this is a magnificent um, thing. It, it sparked a lot of talk and debate, but how does this, I don't know, how does he feel about this? I mean, we rarely hear the artist's impressions towards their own work, necessarily, so mm -hmm. I think that's a good question to ask. And Rob, how about you? Well, I don't know what it is your painting. What would you ask him? Uh, Daddy, yeah, please explain. It? Where should I hang it? <laughs> um, how to keep my child from seeing this? <laughs> yeah, should, should I show it to my child, or should I wait until she's 18 first? <laughs> Do they, is there an age limit on the age restriction? <laughs> so you ask, is this porn? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you could say that, basically. Well, everything around the birthing process is, is contortion and discomfort, in a way. So wait, except my, for my the first birth impression itself. was correct? Yeah. yeah or closer? Yeah, yeah. I'll be wrong, because I'll get the artist's actual input at some point, but... I'm, I'm there. I, if, I, if I had to guess anything, it'd have to be this birth metaphor. So the most surface-level person in the room got pretty close. 
So I don't think it's birth, I think it's reproduction. And birth oh. is just one aspect. Oh, come on, that she's splitting eggs. Oh, okay. I think they're, they're very different things. In impregnation, too, there's that thing, right? Reproduction, reproduction you know, it's our okay. okay. Creation? Rats. Creation, yeah, that, I like that. That's even bigger. Creation. <laughs> Creation possible. is an uncomfortable process, often it's said. I like that. Can't let me win, can you? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's all the same thing. 